Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the fourth, uh, sorry, fifth episode of our Java um, game development tutorial series. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank uh, those of you who have subscribed, uh, and I'd like uh, to ask anyone who finds this useful to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell anyone that you you know might happen to know who might be interested in this sort of thing. Uh, tell them about it because I find it easier to stay motivated to make new episodes when I know there are you know people watching them and people waiting for me to come out with more. Uh, so I also apologize for not having posted any in the last couple of days. Um, today I hope to record as many as possible, so I've got plenty to re uh, release over the next uh, week or so. So let's get right into it. If you remember last uh, episode, we um, created this um, rendering loop which, whenever we uh, run the game, draws a black screen. Um, I got rid of the, the uh, red rectangle uh, code, um, which, if you remember right, it was just g.setColor, color.red, and then g.drawRect, and then give it some values. It came right after this black code right here. Um, anyway... Um, today we're going to add an FPS counter so we can track our, you know, per, our game's performance as we work on it. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick, and it's really quite simple. Uh, first thing we need is, up here near the top, we need a couple global variables. Private, uh, static, long, last FPS check equals zero. Private, static, long, uh, no, make that private static int current FPS equals zero. Uh, private static int total frames equals zero. That's all we need uh, there. Now back down here in our start rendering method in our thread, uh, our main loop right here where we say while true. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to say total frames plus plus we're gonna add one frame because you know this is a new frame let's go ahead and add to our frame count now we need to do a little check here we say if uh, system dot nano time which is the most precise clock that your uh, that Java will have access to uh, measures time in nanoseconds as accurately as possible so if system dot nano time is greater than last FPS check plus one zero 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 exactly that number of zeros this is one seconds worth of nanoseconds because we want to do what we want to do is we want to check the frames per second every second basically we'll increment our frames every frame and then as soon as one second has elapsed we'll see how many frames we've accumulated that's the number of frames that have elapsed in this last second that's how I do frames per second anyway um, so if system nano time is greater than last FPS check plus one second, then last FPS check equals system dot nano time, because obviously we are checking right now, and current FPS equals total frames. So we can store the value of this, and, you know, freeze it at wherever it is right now, and then total frames equals zero. So we can start over again. FPS counter. Okay. Um, so if we want to see if it actually works, then what we'll do is every second we'll say system dot out dot print line FPS and then print out current FPS. And once we close the program, as you can see here, we got 244 frames per second. That's actually not excellent, but I think it's because I'm also running my screen recorder at the time, because normally when I'm not, I get, you know, at least 600. Um, so, um, let's go ahead and make this actually draw to the screen. That'd be very useful in this case. Um, right here, uh, right after we said clear the screen, then we said render stuff. After we render stuff, let's go ahead and say draw FPS counter, and we'll do that thusly. We'll say g.setColor, color dot, uh, I'm going to say light gray, it might show up on the most uh, surfaces, um, g.drawString, and now it needs a string, so we'll say string dot 
value of uh, current FPS. It's going to convert that number current FPS into a string that reads, you know, whatever current FPS is. And we want to draw it at, uh, I think, two pixels away from the, this is basically the X position of the um, left hand side. And this is the um, Y position of the bottom of the uh, string. So this is basically pixels uh, this is the distance in pixels from the lower left hand uh, corner of your screen. Uh, no, that's not right, sorry. Distance in pixels from the upper left hand corner of your screen of the lower left hand corner of the uh, string, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, we want it to be two pixels from the left, and then we want it to be, um, since we're using the game's coordinates, game height minus two. That way, uh, we're two pixels away from the bottom of the screen, no matter how big the screen is. And as you can see, we actually get something there. Uh, my screen's cutting it off slightly. I might make this uh, four pixels just to be safe. You may not have to do that. But as you can see, we're getting our frames per second drawn to the bottom of the screen now. And it's in pixelated. Uh, you can, this really shows off our pixelation, uh, because since we're scaling the game up from a smaller size to fit onto the screen, it comes out looking pixelated like that. So that's pretty awesome right there. Um, and uh, as you can see, I'm getting about 250 frames per second. Um, so that's all we're going to do for this episode. If you like this episode, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.